So I'm going to try and uh, wish everybody Happy New Year, although Paul and I were having discussions about when that gets old. And I think the 16th of January is still OK. So Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, and welcome uh, to the IPA. And welcome to 2020, uh, a new year and a start of a new decade. And you know, I don't know about all of you, but certainly it feels like after being here at last year's reception and, and being in the UK for the last few, you, you really feel like this year there is, not because of me, but a cloud of doom and gloom sort of lifted. <laughs> Uh, this year, as, as we get into the year, there genuinely seems to be a lot more uh, optimism and uh, it feels a lot brighter uh, coming into the year. And of course, I say this very much knowing that it was wet and gray and drizzling as you all got into the, the room. Um, so we're exactly halfway through January between paychecks, as far away from them as you can be. Um, and next week is Blue Monday, so purportedly the most depressing day of the year. And uh, for, for those of you who were uh, uh, passing me and Paul in the uh, wedding reception line that we had out there, um, you know, it, it was sort of pretty clear that there's a lot of people still celebrating dry January and veganary and all kinds of, uh, of things. And, and certainly a few friends as they passed by started to comment about the fact that this new commitment uh, of exercise uh, that they started the new year with is already starting to feel a little bit overambitious. So uh, my first action as IPA president will be to do all of you a favor and make this speech what all good New Year addresses, I believe, should be short to the point and very upbeat. So um, because we've got so much to look forward to in 2020, for the first time in four years, we have the confluence of the Euro 2020. We've got the Olympics in Tokyo and then, of course, the U.S. presidential elections. In each of these competitions, whether your team wins or not, uh, and unfortunately, chances are that they're not going to be winning all three of those. Um, you know, we, uh, we will definitely feel like our spirits and, 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 and hopes are certainly lifted. And according to Zenit's forecast, global advertisers are going to spend $7.5 billion more uh, this year. Uh, as you saw from uh, uh, the bellwether, we are seeing a similar uh, uptick. Uh, around uh, growth, and that this despite all of the U.S.-China challenges uh, that uh, we're hopefully getting through. So at home, we've got a new government, and at least the promise of no general elections or referenda for another five years, which uh, is a good thing. And again, whether or not you were happy with the outcome or you feel like the result was decisive, uh, it did act as a bit of a pressure valve, I think. Uh, and uh, we have some resolution, if not yet, deal or closure, it's reduced some amount of uncertainty and certainly all of the, the business conversations uh, that happened at CES, Davos next week, uh, continue to, uh, to show signs of uh, optimism. I mentioned the bellwether for those of you who've seen it. You would have seen revealing marketing budgets climbing out of what was stagnant and negative growth in the final quarter of 2019 and even better, anticipation of strong growth uh, as the year uh, goes on. My hope is the IPA and our industry will head into 2020 on the back of this with some real positivity. My agenda, for those of you who, uh, who were tuning into it, this idea of reimagination was not really to imagine a wish that things could be different, but to think about how we can embrace, by working together, uh, a new way of doing what we do. And uh, you know, it's been interesting over the last few weeks, and I'm sure many of you have seen it, you know, there's certainly a lot of commentators who are starting to suggest that our industry has become too woke to the social issues of our day. Brand purpose is a distraction from business growth or that change fatigue is killing creativity and complexity is too difficult to keep talking about. But, but our, our promise at the IPA and, and everybody here at Belgrade Square, and I'm sure all of you, I think are very committed to embracing the change that we know is in front of us uh, as real partners uh, to our clients, being champions of creativity, effectiveness, and ultimately really bringing true value to businesses and, uh, and brands. So at the forefront of every conversation that underpins that, whether it's trust, brand safety, diversity, social and environmental responsibilities, skills and training, our members are hopefully beginning to see and continue to benefit from all of the work the IPA is doing. To this end, just a few things and then I'll wrap. First, you know, we're really pushing for a significant amount of collaboration between the IPA and, and ISBA for the first time on February the 6th, 
to drive forward the partnership between clients and agencies, we have a joint uh, meeting of both councils coming together, a real vital step in helping us as agencies start to reimagine our relationship with, with clients. You'll see advances in diversity and inclusion efforts. Our late spring members lunch is now sharing a decade review. I was talking earlier to Marilyn Baxter, whose report in 1990, Women in Advertising, kicked all of this off. Thank you, Marilyn. And, uh, and then, you know, you, you think about Campaign and, and Unilever, two great partners for another IPA initiative called the iList. The iList is a celebration of industry role models whose actions are driving a more diverse and inclusive advertising agency. Another quick step, advertising unlocked. We're seeing our careers day now have 100 member agencies open their doors to future young and diverse talent. I know many of the people in the room have already signed up. For those of you who haven't, you know, please do that because we depend on this fresh blood getting excited about our industry and what it is that we do. A greater understanding of how technology can be harnessed for creativity um, to drive growth in the shape of an IPA-led tech mission to China. So we've been doing the Valley for a number of years, but this year it really felt that China would be a great place to start to understand some of the trends that are significantly outstripping what we're seeing here in the West. And then finally, we've begun a full review of the IPA's L&D program, which already is fantastic, but is the gold standard. And to ensure that it stays the gold standard, continue to look at how we can future-proof it as we continue to develop careers and skills from the entry level to the executive uh, and equip people and agencies to really start to be the bringer of that different thinking into client organizations. Finally, 2020 is effectiveness year. In fact, not just any effectiveness year, but the celebration of 40 years of IPA effectiveness awards. It's not lost on me that 40 years ago, uh, we saw great value in championing the very best work done for clients, and, and the IPA effectiveness awards now includes the President's Prize for the best contribution of effectiveness through the use of innovative and new technology. What's changed over 40 years is the complexity of the landscape uh, and business, but the IPA has always stayed at the forefront of making sure that being effective and effectiveness is a critical part of what we do. Uh, when we start to look at everything um, that we're doing, we feel like this 40th year will you know, provide a lot more published proof of the value we create through the cases that get submitted at these IPA Effectiveness Awards. So in conclusion, I hope for each of you, 2020 will be giving voice to our ability, a clear vision so that no one's doubt about our role in this industry, our role in our clients' businesses. And while embracing this change, keep telling our stories because every one of you in the room is a storyteller and you've helped the IPA tell its story, our industry tell its story, and that passion is what's really magic about our industry. And so as we think about uh, whether you're having a dry January or not, uh, celebrate, each of, uh, celebrate with each of you the coming of this new year and cheers. Thank you.